<laughs> hey guys, my name's Gavin. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made this super cool guitar beat thing inside of FL Studio. So I'm gonna show you guys the melody that I ended up making and then the drums that I put on it. That's right, I actually did drums in a beat um, for YouTube. I think it's been like two months or something since I've done that, just a little fun fact there. But also I have a couple other things I wanna talk about quick. First off, I'm gonna be editing my own videos again. For the time being, uh, me and Miles, we had a big fallout. Um, I'm kidding, but we're also like, we're both super busy with school. So we gotta like tackle the workload together. So you guys are gonna get to see Kevin Hadley edited videos again. And I'm also coming out with a loop kit. Actually, by the time this is out tomorrow, cause I'm recording it today, I'm gonna edit it, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna have a loop kit out. I forget what the loop kit, <laughs> I forget what the loop kit is called, but uh, here it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already at Gavin Headley underscore and let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna play you guys what it sounds like. Then Alright, so that is the main part of the beat. Um, after that, it goes into like a piano part, but I laid this out kind of crappily, so I'm not going to explain the layout or anything here. But for the most part, the loop is divided up into two different parts. We have like this guitar part and then like a secondary guitar part. I'll explain that more in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, those are the drums. Should I really even explain how I did the drums? I feel like more useful tip would be how I mixed it, basically. Um, although OBS likes to kind of compress my audio and make it sound a little bit louder than it actually is I did a test it's not like clipping or anything crazy I have a soft clipper on the master channel and what I do I have like a soft clipper here at like the normal settings but then I go into a limiter and I make sure I have it above the soft clipper uh, I just lower the ceiling which compresses it a little bit makes the kick sound a little bit more punchy makes everything sound a little bit more punchy but in specifically the kick since they're like the loudest element in the mix at least for me and they have to duck more in volume so I have that and then when you compress it, it's gonna make the ceiling, like if I take the limiter off here, as you can see the ceiling, it's not hitting zero. So this soft clipper, what it does, it, it's just a super nice plugin because it smoothens stuff out. But if you boost the post here to get it to hit just right below zero, it's just gonna make it a little bit louder uh, without like distorting it. So yeah, that's that. Uh, drum sounds, I used this, uh, what's it called? The organic drum kit right here. I don't know how I got this. I use the Sanctuary 808, pretty common 808. It's in Nick Mira's uh, Mirror Touch Volume 1 kit. Common 808 for this kind of trap pop crossover sound. And then I use like a trap hi-hat and then like an organic kind of um, more like realistic sounding hi-hat too. And I just staggered the velocities on that to make it sound a little bit more energetic and cool and realistic sounding. That's basically it for the drums of this beat. Now we're going to hop in to how I made the melody, which is going to take a little bit of time to explain as you guys are about to see it. So basically, uh... <laughs> This FLP is absolutely just infested with takes of the guitar. So this is what all of this is. This is just guitar takes, okay? So don't pay any attention to that as well as this. You know, it looks like I'm looking at Ableton when I look at this. Ugh. It all started with a FL Keys piano. And the, originally the guitar wasn't even going to be like a big part of the loop. So this is what the FL Keys piano is. Okay. So it's just switching between a couple different chords here. So we have these in their simplest form, put these down. Oh, okay, cool. So these are just octaves. These are all bass notes right here. Uh, so this is like, we don't actually have chords. I just have bass notes. Uh, so I could, you could make chords out of these if you wanted to. You could make this into a minor chord and it wouldn't sound bad, but I didn't do it for this because I feel like when you make chords sometimes like I wanted to let this melody almost breathe and I felt like just by using the octaves or different C's or like just basically duplicating bass notes lower gives a little bit more room because you're having like less notes um, it's just like a more full sound if that makes sense uh, but we just have this bass line so it goes from C G sharp D sharp and A sharp and then I like to make sure that I spend a lot of time with my bass lines um, and my chord progressions of my melodies because they are what direct the melody basically just like 
it's that center piece that you try to build everything off of, at least for me. I know some producers uh, like to do their top melodies first, uh, but for me, I just like to get a nice chord progression or bass line to kind of set the tone for the melody and anchor it all together. Oh uh, yeah, so just three different octaves. It makes it sound super full and wide sounding. And now I just have this little arpeggiated thing right here. So it's this C playing and then I have these notes. This is technically, I don't want to talk a lot about music theory because it's not really important in my opinion, but this is technically a root and then a fifth or basically taking the middle note out of the chord, this is the D sharp major chord out, um, and then creating this kind of um, repeating arpeggiated chord progression. So it's... And we do that same technique throughout the entire melody, just taking out those middle notes, except we get to hear, uh, then I just decided to vary it up. Again, not following any music theory here, that's what makes it so hard to um, try to talk about because music theory is like all cool and all but it doesn't really help explain the musical process like I don't know how to explain this basically I just like the way this sounded that's really all what it comes down to and a lot of people ask me like what the best way to get better at making melodies is and honestly I just say practice try unique things don't go by the book this is like the definition of not going by the book really So then I don't really follow any sort of guidelines here, just keeping that same rhythm, just picking out a couple notes I like. But then here I use this chord or these two notes next to each other to help lead back down into the bass line. For whatever reason, I just thought that going down the scale here was a good thing to do to help wrap it up. Makes it sound a lot more concluded. Like you guys just heard that and now it's not bad by any means. You gotta figure out what I did next. I think what I did is I took these FL keys and I used three or four different other pianos and I just layered that same melody onto three different other pianos or four, however many I used, and messed with the panning on those pianos to create like a cool, cool, full sounding sound. Um, I know a lot of people do this with guitars. They like pan, do two separate guitar recordings, pan one hard left and one hard right. Um, they're playing the same melody or whatever. Uh, and it just gets like a cool sound. That's what I've been doing with my pianos. It also gives them like a super unique sound. Just by listening to one, you're not gonna be able to tell it was just from Omnisphere. There could be like an Omnisphere piano in there, but you could also have like an Addictive Keys mixed in. It just creates like a super cool full sound and you'll never be able to tell that it was like multiple different pianos. It just sounds full and nice. If you guys wanna see more about how I did that, check out my last video. I'll have it linked down in the description or if I remember it, maybe I'll have like a pop-up somewhere over here so you guys can check that out. I talk about it a little bit more in depth in that video, uh, but that's the same technique that I did here. So these will be all of our pianos. I'm just gonna grab them and throw them down here for a little bit. So you can see I pan them. Just addictive keys here for the most part. Like I don't think for this one, actually yeah, I didn't even use this contact one. It was just two addictive keys. Sometimes I use Omnisphere. I think in the last video I used Omnisphere. But yeah, that's the piano. And now moving on, we can unmute the piano right here. And now talk about the guitar progression that I put underneath it. Basically with guitar, I feel like it kind of gets a, like a rap of just being like super super hard to play and it is um, depending on what you want to play but for this melody I just have like a super simple progression using uh, what is called power chords basically when you put a finger on this thick E string right here you put like your pointer finger there and you put like a ring finger skipping a fret it's like skipping one of these faces and it's over on the next string which is the A string so it sounds like this when you play it I just followed those bass, bass notes that I talked about with the piano. Basically, I followed those notes, just move up and down, keeping the same shape with my fingers the entire time, so you don't even have to move anything. So it just makes it super easy uh, to switch back between stuff. So that's what I did, except I just like kind of plucked it out like this. Yeah. Yeah, so I just did that. Super simple, not hard to play at all. It really just takes a little bit of practice to do that. Uh, and effects that I added on that. I'll try to find it. So I just added a guitar rig. Uh, I feel like my guitar is kind of cool sounding, uh, but it definitely needs an amp, uh, something simple to give it a little bit more grit. So I used a simple guitar tone from Guitar Rig, 
and mix it back so it wasn't as harsh. And then I also used this EQ to do nothing. Um, it's just there. I guess I was going to use it at some point, but I didn't. And I have this expand bass right here, just filling up low end. And after that, I have the top line, which I can't really explain too much, honestly. This is what the top line originally looked like, just this whole mess. But, but then I rendered it out into here. I'll show you the effects that I put on it. But basically, I'm just using, I just played all of these notes on the G string. Basically, just taking my finger here on the G string and making a little melody out of it. Right now, I'm terrible at playing in time, so that's something I need to work on, but you can get away with a lot just chopping up inside of FL Studio. And one thing that I need to work on with guitar, uh, if you're hearing this, is sustaining my notes when I play top lines. It's like I kind of almost abruptly cut off these notes on the top line. That's one thing that I would change if I did this again. Doesn't sound wrong, uh, bad, don't get me wrong, and reverb definitely helped make the notes sound like they were going on for longer. I try to improve that um, when I'm making my top lines in the future. I put that same guitar rig preset on it, by the way. I'm pretty sure, I don't know where the effects are in this, but I'm pretty sure all I did was put reverb on it, guitar rig, um, and then maybe a little bit of compression using the Fruity Wolf compressor. We'll pretend like this is the right one. And I also added a little bit of delay to the chords, the guitar chords, to uh, just like help them give a little bit more life um, and like add like a different kind of element to help fill them out. I use the lo-fi, I don't really use the wow, that just detunes it, uh, and then the comp a little bit. And yeah, that's basically, honestly, the loop. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be going on here, except I have a second half, where I just played this little pattern. But for that, to give it that like cool pitched up sound, I just took out some of the low end, because I thought it was a little muddy. That's just me using the power chords again, just going like this. This is what it looks like again. My fingers um, in the same position that I talked about before. I use the muffled up octave preset to give it that cool high end. So it sounds like before and after. Then I use reverb just to make it have a little bit more ambience. So yeah, that's just like the second half of the sample. Then I like simplify it. Uh, so it's just this part looping over a little bit. And I have like a separate take, just same top line. And then I like this part because it helped like transition back to the start. So it's like something that you haven't heard throughout the entire melody, but it kind of goes along with the melody. Uh, I'm talking like really abstract here because it's kind of like similar to this part. Just different notes. Yeah. I also have like some reverse stuff going on right here uh, towards the end. I'm pretty sure they're like stacked on top of each other so you guys can't see it, but it's like a guitars that are ver uh, reversed a little bit. I thought they built up like tension almost um, and helped like transition back to the start again because that's like what reverse stuff does. It's like all building up. It's almost like a riser. I just have a vocal singing into the microphone. Vocal? No, it's not. Yeah, this is the vocal. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how I do my vocals, check out like literally any one of my videos besides like the last two. I think I give like a tutorial on vocals, and I'm assuming most of you guys have seen how I do it already. Basically, I just hum into the microphone with auto tune on my voice, uh, take out low end and high end with an EQ, add a bunch of reverb to it to make me sound like I'm coming underwater. The reverb or the EQ also helps with that. Um, and then I'll add like another plugin like RC20 or like a formants plugin or formants plugin just to add like a little bit more grit to my voice so it doesn't sound as clean. After that, uh, that's basically the entire loop. I just wanted to do something super melodic, cool sounding, full. Uh, I really liked how the guitars and the pianos kind of complemented each other. <laughs> I just can't stop. I can't get over how ugly this FLP looks. So I have all these elements playing here and then I just have one sound at a time from here on out just giving producers the ability to chop stuff up however they want to. I rendered it all out, got something that sounded like this. And I duplicated it underneath, pitched it up an octave, added a bunch of reverb to it. Um, and then chorus, it's like a super cool thing I've been using, using the second, the 50 detune one. It gives it like almost like a, a less harsh, like Q beats style detune and more of like a melodic kind of practical one to use in these kind of loops. I use that, just tuck this one in the background. This is called parallel process. Ooh. This is called parallel processing when you do that. And yeah, I think that's basically the entire loop. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys were able to learn something. Hopefully I'll be able to edit this and get it out in a reasonable amount of time. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you got to this point, uh, we're almost at 3000 subscribers. So again, thank you. Check out my loop kits and read link down below. I'm rambling. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.